Welcome back. Wing It Podcast, GooseDigital.com. Who do we have? Melody. Susan. And Tanya. Welcome. Michael Turksani. I always forget my own name. Let's just go right into it. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Um, well, we're here to talk about something that is um, near and dear to all of our hearts. Um, Calm has been uh, participating in the Canadian Cancer Society for a number of years now and um, into some fairly large uh, fundraising initiatives. So uh, we invited them onto the podcast to hear about their journey and getting into this uh, um, level of uh, participation and what it means to them. And also hear from Tanya about um, um, raising awareness of the cancer so- Canadian Cancer Society generally and uh, why Goose Digital is involved. So maybe we'll start by just doing some intros. We'll start with you, Tanya. Sure. So I'm Tanya Stewart. I'm the director of the GTA region at the Canadian Cancer Society. Awesome. Okay, and I'm Susan Kastruk. I'm vice president of human resources for Comda and in charge of our annual golf tournament. And I'm Melody Collette. I'm the uh, senior vice president of information technology for Comda. Uh, I've been with the, the business for about 30 years and involved with this great charity and organization for a number of years now. Awesome. So um, Goose has something called Goose Gives Back. And just a little quick little plug here for us. So we give to about five different organizations on an annual basis. Two of them are cancer related and the rest of them are uh, wildlife protection and um, conservation. Fits with our name. Um, so we're really um, excited to be a major sponsor of the golf tournament every year and um, sort of meaningful to us because I think, Tanya, as you get into sort of some of the stats, everybody has been probably affected by cancer in one way or another across the country, myself personally, and many of our staff. So um, why don't we kind of start with you talking us through kind of what's 2019 for the Cancer Society, what you're seeing, some general stats and what the mission is. Yeah, so the Canadian Cancer Society's mission is to um, create a a world where no Canadian needs to fear cancer. So we do that through a combination of research and services. The reality is, is that today cancer is the largest, um, uh, one in two Canadians will be diagnosed with cancer. And so that means that we are currently the largest cause of death in Canada. So cancer... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like you said, it impacts everyone. I think, you know, everyone at the table and everyone listening will have a story. Um, and that's just the reality that we live in. Um, it's more than 100 diseases. So, you know, one of the things we often hear about is that, um, you know, you know, why don't we have a cure? But we're not looking for one cure. We're looking for over a hundred cures with with sub cures underneath that. And so we've come a long way, mm-hmm. um, but there's a long way to go. So it's really important to have fundraisers like this help us sort of achieve that mission. And so, you know, in terms of what's next for us, we're working organizationally nationwide on research, um, and research has made incredible strides. Um, we have certain cancers now, like prostate cancer, that have up to a 95% cure rate. That means wow. that if you're diagnosed with prostate cancer today, mm-hmm. um, you know, you, you have a, a really great chance of surviving. Um, breast cancer as well, you know, it's about an 87% five-year survival rate now. Back in maybe 20 years ago, it was 60%. So we're making progress. Um, there are other cancers, though, that there's lots of work still to be done. Um, lung cancer, for instance, um, mm-hmm. the survival rate there is 17%. Um, and that's because it's we, we don't have the same prevention techniques, or well, we know not to smoke, but mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's uh, you know we need we need better prevention techniques there, and we're also still having to investigate how you can easily identify those cancers. Um, whereas now with breast and prostate, for instance, there's lots of of testing you can do as you age to make sure that you sort of get an early diagnosis. So that becomes a real challenge. Yeah. Wow. So I think we'll come back to um, your mission going forward Mm -hmm. between the research and the services, because I think there were some good things that you talked to us earlier about um, that you guys are doing. Absolutely. Um, Maybe we could talk a little bit about how did Comda get into this and um, as a fairly large mid-size what would you say like mid-size fundraiser in in your region yeah in in the gta region it's it's an incredibly good fundraiser absolutely yeah so big chunky fundraiser last year we raised how much Sixty-eight thousand dollars. Sixty-eight thousand dollars. well done um so how did comda get involved why when well um 
Of course, it's, it's because of the cancer and, um, you know, with our employees and with our own families. Um, COMD has had an awful lot of um, employees that have gone through cancer. We've lost several. Um, we've had some survivors. And, of course, we have a few that are currently under treatment and some that aren't even able to work because of the treatment. And, uh, of course, our thoughts are with them. So um, we started this about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. um, one of our um, employees actually came to us and had an idea for doing fundraising. And it started out that uh, we were going to do a driving range, a marathon, a 12-hour marathon at a driving range. Wow. And uh, so we signed up a number of people, and uh, we, had the, uh, we had it all organized. And uh, one, of the, one of our long-term uh, employees at the time was going through pancreatic cancer with um, a six-month window. And um, so the event was dedicated basically to her. Very unfortunately, the night before the tournament, she did leave us. And oh. uh, so the next day was a very sad day, but it was also a very, very cold day. And um, so we, we started at 8 o'clock in the morning, and we tried to muscle our way through till 8 o'clock at night, but... <laughs> and we closed it down at five. <laughs> yeah, the arms gave way. We were shivering, and uh, it was just too much. But we did uh, have an awful lot of fun while we froze. And uh, so we did that for two years. And then somebody said, um, why don't we take this to an actual golf tournament? Because we have an awful lot of um, our customers, our employees, our suppliers that are golfers. And so that was the beginning of the, the big golf tournament. And uh, this will be our fifth year to run that tournament. We run it with um, our vendor partners, the preferred uh, suppliers that we have. Um, they donate, they sponsor, um, they provide all the funds so that every penny that comes from the golf income actually goes to cancer. So um, from the golf to the meals, to the prizes, uh, to the auction items, everything is donated. Nothing comes out of the proceeds. And I think that's one of the things that we're most proud of. Absolutely. And that's how we get to $68,000 a year. That's, yeah, so that's a, what a great way to start and kick, kick that off in terms of a sad story there at the beginning, but obviously lit a fire for you guys to rally the troops. Um, Melody, why don't you tell us a little bit about, before we get to the, the big golf tournament, some of the other things that you guys do um, or ever have done over the years uh, to raise awareness internally and raise funds. Well, we certainly have done um, a number of internal events with our staff because we, we want our staff to participate and, and understand what COMD is trying to achieve in, in the, the business and um, supporting um, different charities around. So um, we've done a lot of internal events, like silly things like raising money to bust balloons, the most uh, <laughs> silly way that you can figure out how to bust a balloon, um, many barbecues and um, just sort of anything that we could figure out how to raise money and just have some fun with it and raise awareness ourselves. We had a big garage sale where we emptied all of our uh, promo products out, out the door and see uh, how much money we could raise from that. So a, a number of things and um, it, it's, it's a challenge, but we enjoy, we certainly enjoy doing it. So Tanya, you mentioned a little bit about um, the mission being, or, or I guess the, how the, the goal of the organization between um, research and services. So mm -hmm. could you talk a little bit more about the difference between the two, how you guys think about those two things? Sure. So research is definitely something that we look at on a holistic level, sort of nationwide, making sure that when we get funds in that we're going to use towards research that we fund the very best possible research. Um, and so we do that through panel reviews with experts and, and you know, it's a very scientific process. And mm -hmm. that's definitely a really important part of um, the, the business. The second thing that we do with our mission is actually fund services. And that the, that's the part that I, I'm most excited to always talk about and mm -hmm. feel most passionate about because it really affects the community. Um, and so we provide a, a number of services. You know, our website, for instance, is an incredibly important service across Canada. It's, it's sort of the place to go if you need cancer information. Um, we also have a cancer information service, which is, of course, online, but also um, a telephone service where people can call and um, and get the help they need and that help can really vary um, i had a wonderful opportunity recently to actually listen in on some calls and some of those calls are as basic as you know i i want to quit smoking can you guys sort of put me in touch with the right service to quit smoking mm -hmm. um, and then there's calls um, one of the ones that really touched me the most personally was a woman who called in and she said um, i was just diagnosed with cancer today 
I have to tell my family and I don't know where to start. Wow. And so she sat on the phone with a, with a trained professional, and these are nurses, people with counseling backgrounds um, who we have um, manning the phone lines, and she role played for 30 minutes how she was gonna be able to tell her husband and her kids that wow. she had cancer. Wow, what a story. And just, you know, you don't realize that that's a service that people need, but they do. Mm-hmm. When, you're, when you're sort of, you know, you, you get that cancer diagnosis, and the last word you hear is cancer. You know, everything that comes after is just that sort of, um, you know, Charlie Brown teacher voice. Um, And so you come out with all these questions and and we're there to answer them. And so that's a service that we provide to the community. We also have a um, volunteer-led transportation program. So participants can, um, participants, um, clients can... uh, can register for the program and then volunteer drivers drive them to their cancer treatments. So this is a program that's really about neighbors driving neighbors. They're they're sort of mm-hmm. helping each other. And what happens is, you know, you make a phone call, we arrange a, a, a ride for you. And sometimes we have, um, you know, cars literally driving down the 400, starting in Barrie in the morning, picking up five people, bringing them to a local hospital for treatment, and then waiting around and, and then bringing them home. And wow. so. Nice. We know about that one. Yeah. Actually, that happened with uh, our father. Oh, really? And he was in Barrie, and he was driven down. Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful program, and, uh, and the volunteers are such incredible people, really, you know, giving their time, um, but also just lending their moral support, too. Absolutely. Yeah. So the funds are going to, you know, you said about half of the budget is services? Yeah, it's roughly. about 50-50. About 50 yeah. between that and research. So. You know, that kind of leads us to the, this big, well, big in our world, this golf tournament, I think, mm-hmm. especially given the size of the Comda organization to put something like this on. So we've raised, you've raised how much over the years? We're just over $270,000 combined. That's amazing. And That's we're, the goal for this year is? 50. Well, certainly 50 and break, break that 300000 for yeah. sure. Wonderful. See how far we can go. That's great. Um, so why don't we talk a little bit about the tournament itself and how, how that's um, put together um, to raise this money. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of people that are involved between your uh, employees, the staff, volunteers, vendors. So you, can I turn it over to maybe you, Susan, who puts this sucker on? Like, well, what's, <laughs> what's involved with getting this whole thing going? Well, um, certainly the, the beginning of it was because it was a very sad set of circumstances uh, for families and employees and suppliers that that experienced cancer. So the idea was to try and do something that was sort of uplifting and fun, and um, that's the golf tournament. It's a fun day for everybody. Um, We have uh, a number of vendor sponsors, of which Goose Digital is one of the big ones, and we thank them for that. Uh, They are a major sponsor. We have many other major sponsors as well. Um, We reach out to our suppliers, small one-man operations that will donate. uh, They'll donate for the prize table. They'll uh, donate auction items. Um, They'll sponsor a foursome. There's so many different ways to participate, and um, we are so very pleased and proud that we have so many of them participating. I mean, without them, this would not be easy to do at all. There's a lot of work. Um, we have a committee of about 10 people that meet uh, once a month. Um, basically, when the last one ends, we start planning the mm. next one. But by May 1st, we're actively out there um, inviting our sponsors uh, to repeat, looking for new sponsors, new donations, um, getting, out, getting the information out to the golfers, looking for more golfers um, each and every year. We have sold out every tournament so well, we're very proud of that as well. And again, that's due to the suppliers. The people that are involved in our tournament are primarily involved with Comda and its business and, and the employees and their families. We don't actually promote or go outside and, and have sign up posters and things of that. It's really an in-house um, tournament for us. Yeah. Um, so when you think of the things that you've kind of had to do over the years to pull all this together and some of the learnings, maybe we could talk a little bit about sort of how you're making it fun and, and, and different every year, because it's some of the same people that are attending every year, mm-hmm. as well as some of those lessons that you've, mm. that you've learned. Well, for sure. Um, so many of the golfers are avid golfers, and uh, so they want to come out and have a good golf experience. But at the same time, we want it to be fun. So 
we don't have uh, the longest drive competitions that are for the longest drive. We try to have these competitions that are more fun. So one of the ones we've done, of course, is the marshmallow drive. And everybody gets a hoot out of that because the marshmallow won't go very far. Mm. And if it's too hot, which it has been, the marshmallows start to melt. And uh, the birds come after the marshmallows and the volunteers are running around trying to pick them up before the birds can get them. Um, another uh, fun event that we have is where they have to pick a club on a, on a par four and they have to play the entire hole with that club. So that causes an awful lot of laughter going through someone trying to hit off the tee on their putter or trying to um, uh, put the ball in, uh, you know, putt the hole um, with, a, with a three wood or something of that nature. So uh, those are the fun things that we do on the course throughout the day leading up to, of course, the dinner and the uh, auction that raises the, so much money for us. And the issuing of the prize table, um, where people are frantically buying tickets and putting them into the buckets for the different mm-hmm. prizes that they want to win. And inevitably, you always get the one that you really didn't want that much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Someone else beat you to the punch, sort of. Well, maybe, you know, um, do we talk about Pick a Club? Do we, mm-hmm. Maybe, Melody, you could talk a little bit about that. Because I've been on your team and, and been exposed to picking the wrong club. and how that And how that helps, but... Actually, I think we had some good success with the wrong clubs that we did pick. But, uh, yeah, I mean, as, as Susan said, you know, you could end up with a, a putter, which I think you did the yes, first I year. Yes, I did, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, he had That's to... Good pictures of that. Did, you know, on that par four over the water, use a putter to hit his first drive. And uh, everyone had their own club to use, of course. So, you know, I, I think I picked a driver. And I had to use my driver to putt it into the hole. So... Yeah, it's a hoot. Yeah, those are definitely some fun things. But, you know, I think those are some good examples of how the Comda team has really made the golf tournament fun Mm -hmm. for our vendors and and for um, anybody who's volunteered to come out and and play for that day. The volunteers certainly make the day go smoothly. Um, All right from the beginning, when you come in and you register and you pick up your welcome package, uh, we do a lot of... um, uh, we do a lot of organization around promo products and, and giving back to our vendors who take a lot of time and money. So, you know, they get a special T-shirt or whatever promo product that they want to, that they can go back and, and show that they've sponsored a, a, a good event like this and feel proud to be part of it with us. Cool. Well, you know, I think that's, um, it gives a really good background. I'm sure there's things going on behind the scenes that are, you know, we don't hear about in terms of the, the chaos kind of on the day and, and that type of thing. You guys are, are not giving us lots and making it seem like it's perfectly well organized, but it is. well, it's taken uh, five years of to get there. making the five mistakes. And, yeah. But you know, on. one of the things we said, well, you know, why are we doing this? And I you know, brought it up um, earlier, Tanya, in terms of just raising awareness. I think one of these reasons why we wanted to do this today was we, you know, we feel very strongly about our participation in it. So we've got this little uh, vehicle to be able to raise awareness, but also maybe you can help talk to prospective um, event organizers or people that may want to get into this at a, at a, maybe not at this level, like right out of the gate, but what are the, some of the things that they can do and um, how would you start if you were a company that wanted to? Absolutely. Well, I, what I love hearing about about the tournament, and it's my favorite thing about this type of fundraising, is is how unique and special you can make it to yourself. So, you know, I can honestly say I've never been to a golf tournament before where you put a, a marshmallow, but that would probably be about <laughs> my level of goal. Like, that's where I could compete. Um, mm-hmm. Anything else would be probably dangerous to the person standing behind me Mm -hmm. so I definitely um that's what I love the most about this and I think that's the thing that um, companies or even individuals can do is sort of think about something that they're passionate about or that they enjoy and then find a way to sort of fundraise around that you know so if you're a company it is sort of being able to say okay we've got vendors we've got suppliers how can we how can we work with those people better or what can we do along with our clients or you know if you're more public facing is there something that you can do um, to bring people into the business that's going to sort of engage with them and help raise funds. So with our, our, our cancer fighter program, you guys have the shirts on, or the, the logos there. Um, that's, a, that's the real beauty of that program is you can kind of think about what really works for you. And, and so it's, you know, it's, it can be as simple as um, 
you know, during the month of October um, for, for Breast Cancer Awareness Month or during during the month of April, just saying, you know what, as an organization, we're going to do something, you know, mm-hmm. collectively, um, internally, that's going to be a lot of fun that, you know, we're going to do a barbecue or a bake sale and we're going to have some fun that way. Um, I've heard tell in, in history of, of CEOs or presidents of organizations saying, you know, if you know, if you guys collectively as a team raise X amount of dollars, you know, uh-huh. I'll shave my head, or yes. I'll, you yeah. know, that too. Yeah. you yes, know, that kind, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So you can really, and and you know, the thing is, is that um, with a disease like cancer, and so many people touched, it's going to resonate with your with your staff and your clients. And then there's always so many great ideas out there. You know, it's we you know we spend so much time with our with our work families yeah. that right. being able to do something fun together and and you know make a little bit of a difference. Is, is a great thing. And, you know, with, with you know, funds like this, that's you know, $300,000 over a number of years. I mean, that's, you know, that's the kind of money that can fund, you know, really life-changing research. Um, but, you know, you, if you raise $30, you know, that's a round trip ride to a cancer treatment. So, right. you know, it's every bit makes a difference. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's great advice. And I think that um, we're, Again, we're very pr- proud and thankful to be involved at level, w- the level that we are involved. Um, thanks for for doing um, for for actually doing this because I mean I think you're you are touching a lot of individuals and it, it takes a lot to pull something like this together. It's not your full time job by any stretch of the imagination, nor I'm sure the people that are on the committee. Um, so yeah, thank you, Comda, and thank you, Tanya, for making the the trip down. I thank all of you. Thanks. And so thank much. you, Goose. Oh, yeah. well, you're welcome. Yeah. Well, I think that's about a wrap. Unless we have anything else we want to throw on the table. I don't no, think I think so. I great ideas that have come out from having a yeah. conversation with you today, actually. <laughs> you know, those some are some really good things thing. to bring back to our employees. That, you know, that's how they're making a difference. So Absolutely. that's wonderful. If you want to learn more about the, what Comda is doing, you can head over to comdagives.com. Yep. And Tanya, is there a spot where people can go to? Yeah, for all, all your cancer information, visit cancer.ca. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you.